From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello, everyone. I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. Our guest today is Nashville Democratic Congressman Jim Cooper. We always appreciate him taking the time when he's in the district to be with us. So, Congressman, welcome back to the show. Always good to be with you, Pat. Let's start with the number one political topic everywhere I go, and it's what people talk to me about, and that's this crazy 2016 <laughs> presidential race in both sides. There's been new sort of unexpected twists almost every week in both parties. Have you ever seen anything quite like this race? Nobody's ever seen anything like this, and it's a little bit scary. It's not just crazy because you kind of wonder who we're going to end up with. Now, on the Democratic side, you're a strong supporter of former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. It looks like she's still the odds-on favorite to be your party's nominee. But this past week, she stumbled again in Indiana. What happened? Well, she came close to winning Indiana, and she's way ahead in the delegate count. That's all that matters. Well, but and since the Democrats sort of give participation awards for everybody, if you, you get delegates no matter what, so mm -hmm. that, they really didn't make much difference in her delegate count or, or in the difference between the delegate count. You know, Bernie Sanders is a fine man, a fine senator, but he's never visited Tennessee to our knowledge, and I think Hillary has a big advantage here, having been first lady in our neighboring state of Arkansas. Now, every time uh, Secretary Clinton has said, well, I'm going to start focusing a little more on the general election campaign, she stumbles. The first time she did it, she lost eight out of nine contests to Sanders. Now she's lost in Indiana. Uh, she's still very close to the number of delegates that she needs. I think she needs well less than 50 percent of the remaining delegates out there to win just among uh, earned delegates, much less the super delegates. Uh, but why can't she put Senator Sanders away? Well, remember, uh, Bernie has won some states that are really smaller than one precinct in Davidson County. But they call that Wyoming, for example, where there are very few living <laughs> Democrats. And uh, so what if he carries that? And remember, too, that um, Hillary is not a great politician. And this is a year in which the voters say they're not looking for real politicians. So she's not promising everything to everybody. Uh, she's a conventional candidate. And I think that's actually a good and reassuring thing because her husband's presidency was outstanding. The economy was great. A lot of good things happened. It wasn't perfect, but I think Hillary's uh, ready for the job. Well, you say yourself that you didn't think Secretary Clinton is a great candidate. She's going to go into the general election against a guy who's been kind of a barracuda as a candidate with Donald Trump. I mean, he is, he's not just <laughs> defeated seven, 16 other people in the Republican field. He's basically forced out some of the other people. He's really annihilated them. How's that going to work? She didn't do very well against President Obama. She, she was the front runner then. She faded. And now she's having this trouble with Bernie Sanders, who nobody thought would be a, a particular contender. What does she need to do better? Well, this is an unusual election because both candidates have such high negative ratings. But Donald Trump has the highest negative ratings of anyone who has ever run for public office. And she and might be That's second. astonishing. She well, she's up second. there. But she has a long track record of public service. Uh, Mr. Trump has done a lot of things in business and on TV, but really has never held office before, so he's a real unknown, and the Republican Party is more split than I've ever seen it. I have a lot of Republicans tell me today that they were Republican, but their party has left them. What's the magic behind Bernie Sanders, especially among young people? I mean, he's almost <laughs> being Gene McCarthyist, if, you, I mean, if, you're, if you're as old as I am and you are to remember that race in 1968. Well, he's a, a very authentic person. Uh, he has a huge following in Vermont, his native state, but Vermont is very different than most other states of the Union. He's actually not been a, a Democrat until very, very recently. He uh, claimed he was independent and independent socialist, and he has tr always tried to be very pure in his voting record, and purity is fine. And he's been against most everything, and uh, that sells very well on the campaign trail, but in terms of building coalitions, I don't think anyone has close to the track record of Secretary Clinton of actually being able to get things done. You mentioned how divided the Republicans have been, but who would have thought the Republicans would have more or less settled on their nominee and the Democrats are still kind of trying to figure it out? Well, it's been apparent that the media has given Donald Trump almost $2 billion of free coverage because he's so outrageous they can't stop covering them. I'm not faulting the media because you see such outrageous things like when he insulted, you know, John McCain, for example. Uh, you know, that was just beyond the pale, but he not only got away with it, it seems to have boosted his campaign because voters seem to be hearing a lot of authenticity from him, and that seems to be what people want to see. There's still primaries to go between Clinton and Sanders. It's not good for the party to see its presumptive nominee stumbling to the finish line. How, do you, how does she correct that? Well, she's doing a lot better than that. She's got 95 percent of the delegates that she needs. It's just a question of time till she gets the remaining delegates. Even in Indiana, when the press ballyhooed the fact that she lost the state, she only won it. By, well, lost it by 
by a fraction. And she got all the delegates she needed up from there. So Look at the national polls, though. Sanders has gotten the margin down into single digits. Uh, are the Democrats having some buyer's remorse before they even nominate Hillary? Well, whatever problems the Democrats have this election, they are pale in comparison to the problems that Republicans have. So you can make anything into horse race. And as I say, Bernie Sanders is a fine person, fine senator. But he's really better at representing Vermont than the nation as a whole. But he tends to run better against the Republicans, including Donald Trump, than Hillary Clinton does. But he's less of a known quantity. He can make himself into something that you know uh, he wants it to be. Hillary is uh, the benefit and the burden is having a long track record. But I think if people want stability and strength and experience, uh, they, Hillary should give them confidence. One thing Hillary Clinton does, though, is unite the Republicans. If you hear one rallying cry for them is, is well, look, I may have some concerns about Donald Trump, but I know I don't want Hillary Clinton to be president. So how does she counteract that? I mean, she, she's, the, she's the Democrat Republicans have long wanted to hate, I mean, and have hated for her on the top of their list. Well, but this should be an election about what people are for and not what people are against. And unfortunately, the but negatives you know, are already don't too high. always vote that way. Well, I know uh, the negative motions are very polarizing, and they get people to the polls. But um, what's not to like? The Clinton track record as president was outstanding. It's one of the best presidencies, and most Republicans acknowledge that today. She was a fine U.S. senator. She was a fine Secretary of State. And it's always tempting to go for the pig and the poke, the unknown quantity, make them into whatever you think they want to be. But I prefer experience because this is the greatest nation in the world. Our job is to keep it that way. We've talked about both these candidates, if it's Trump and Clinton, coming in with maybe the highest numbers any nominees of the two parties have ever had. So that being the case, that probably means the campaigns are going to be the most negative campaigns ever. So that tends to discourage people, disillusion people, turn people off. That means voter turnout gets even lower than it, than it would normally be. That's well, not a good sign. We'll see. You know, uh, John Greer over at Vanderbilt has written a book about how negative advertising actually works a whole lot better than people claim. They complain about it, but then they end up remembering those ads, and oftentimes it motivates them to vote. So I would much prefer a positive election, but it looks like we're going to see about the most negative one we've had in the media age. How does Secretary Clinton bring back in the Bernie Sanders people? I mean, it got rough in New York. There were questions about neither one of them being qualified to be president. Right. Uh, I think they both kind of moved back off that a little bit. But how, who does she? How does she, does she? Is it her vice presidential nominee who helps bring the Sanders people back in? I don't think Sanders himself could be the VP nominee. But what about somebody like Elizabeth Warren? Well, uh, Elizabeth Warren is an outstanding U.S. Senator, and she could be a unifying force. That would be interesting to have two women on the ticket, but uh, I would, that wouldn't stop me from supporting the ticket. I think if you look at the strong words that used in the Democratic primary so far, you'll see that, first of all, Bernie says Trump cannot be elected. So he's totally on board with Hillary on that. Second, uh, as bad as those remarks have been on the Democratic side, they pale in comparison to what the Republicans have been saying about each other. There has never been talk as ugly as in the Republican primary. He just recently, Cruz ended his campaign calling Trump a pathological liar, things like that. Rhetoric doesn't really get much tougher than that. Let's take a break. We're talking with Nashville Congressman Jim Cooper about the presidential contest. We'll talk about other things going on in Washington after this break. Stay with us.